Honda Civic. Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome to Toronto and the Tulowitzki jerseys are prominent here tonight. Troy Tulowitzki will make his first start in a Blue Jay uniform. He is at shortstop and he's leading off tonight. Ten years with the Colorado Rockies. He's a five-time All-Star. And he is anxious to get his first game under his belt here tonight. Philadelphia Phillies won last night 3-2 to two as they are red hot. Phillies coming out of the All-Star break are 9-1 and one since the break. Best record in baseball. Take a look at the Phillies lineup for Pete McCann, the acting manager. Top of the order is Ben Revere, then down in the bottom of the lineup, Jeff Francoeur, betting in the fifth spot tonight. Francoeur in his last six games is hitting 500 with three homers and seven RBIs. And right behind him, Dominic Brown has hit well against R.A. Dickey. Three extra base hits and two RBIs for Brown against Dickey. Brown looking for his first home run of the season. R.A. Dickey would take them out for the 21st time this season. R.A.'s pitched well, but he hasn't had a lot to show for it lately. He's given up three earned runs or less in all but one of his last ten starts. The problem's been the Jays just can't seem to score for him. Blue Jays' big offense, they backed R.A. with just three runs or fewer in seven of those ten contests. He won his last start. That was his first victory in six starts. Defensively in the outfield, Danny Valencia, Kevin Pilar, and Ezekiel Carrera. Bautista is the DH tonight. Donaldson, Tulowitzki, Goins, and Colobello. And Russell Martin behind the plate. Then, of course, Troy Tulowitzki will take his position at shortstop for the first time for the Blue Jays. 1,033 games at shortstop. You mentioned it, 74 errors for a 985 fielding percentage, which is the best all time by a shortstop. Dickey is set. Men Revere is leading off tonight for Philadelphia. There's the first pitch of the game, and we are underway. It's a strike from Dickey. Revere batting 299 for the season. Bouncing ball to Lewitsky gets a chance early. In plenty of time. Welcome to the Blue Jays, Troy Tulowitzki. Get the first one out of the way early, right? First guy up. He shortened up on the defense, respecting the speed of Ben Revere. Ben Revere, so he, he was able to get to the ball in plenty of time and make the play. Get that first one out, out of the way. Talking with some of the players, they mentioned that tulowitzki has got some jitters. His first game with anybody other than the Rockies. Drafted in 2005. Freddy Galvez did not play in the game last night. He is at shortstop tonight. Galvez is the regular shortstop. This is his 91st start of the season. Oh, and one. Inside, ball on the strike. Galvez is a switch hitter. We have seen switch hitters bat right-handed against Dickey. Not the case for Galvez tonight. Check swing. Dickey off the mound, and they're going to call that a fair ball. That's very close to what Ryan Howard did in the game last night. They better call that one a fair ball after what we saw in last night's ball game. Uh, that one didn't do the funny stuff that we saw last night when it went off of Howard's knee. This time just a check swing on a knuckleball. And then tried to get out of the way, and that's clearly in fair territory. Easy out. Yeah, last night Ryan Howard had a similar type of hit. It actually hit Howard on the knee while he was still in the batter's box. It should have been a foul ball, but it went as a base hit. He's on deck. This is Michael Frankel, the... Third baseman, and Dickey has really been throwing that knuckleball well lately. Yeah, he's been changing speeds with the knuckleball. We've seen some 65s and some 66. There's a 66 right there. Middle of the diamond. Donaldson, the third baseman on the mound, makes the catch. Quick inning for Dickey. Just seven pitches. The Phillies are down in order. When we come back, Troy Chilowitzki will have his first at bat in a Blue Jays uniform.
Gibbons Blue Jays. Top of the order is the shortstop, Troy Tulowitzki. And Tulowitzki at Rogerson has played three games. He's hit two home runs. That was back in 2007 when he was with the Rockies. And right behind Tulowitzki is Josh Donaldson against Jerome Williams, the starter for the Phillies. He's 7 for 23 with a three doubles. Got to be a great feeling for Tulowitzki in his first at bat to be welcome to Toronto. Jerome Williams delivers the first pitch. It's downstairs for a ball. I think it's all about respecting his talents and the things that he will bring to this ball club. Fans know what he did with the Rockies. There are there are his numbers for this season. I know it bothers you the same way it bothers me when you hear people unfamiliar with Blue Jay fans say, well, you know, they don't really understand baseball. That's not even close to the no. case. No, they, they understand for sure what, what he means. And you know what else? It, it's not a knock on Jose Reyes, who is no longer here. I think it has more to do with the respect and the knowledge that they have of Troy Tulowitzki's career. Yeah, of the numbers he's put up as a shortstop. Two and one. High pop. That's going to reach the seats out of play. Tulowitzki is a five time All Star, including this season. He made the All Star team. He's won two gold gloves. He's won the Silver Slugger twice, and he's finished in the top five in MVP voting twice. A terrific two way player. It brings a lot of knowledge. Very smart baseball player. Understands the game. Breaking ball and Tulowitzki strikes out. The curveball gets him. Jerome Williams on the mound for the Phillies. The veteran making his sixth start of the season. But only his second for the Phillies since returning from the disabled list after he suffered a strained left hand string. He missed over five weeks with that injury. There are his numbers three and seven. 628 earn run average. Four career versus the Blue Jays. Four career games. He's undefeated at 2-0. Another curveball and Donaldson takes it for a strike. Strike two with the fastball. If you're wondering why Tulowitzki led off, Devin Travis is dealing with a shoulder injury, and John Gibbons said, you know what, instead of moving the middle of the lineup around, I'm going to keep that part intact. He spoke to Tulowitzki about it before the game. He said, I don't care where you hit me. Just hit me wherever you want to. And Tulowitzki can provide some information for Brooke Jacoby, having both spent time in the National League, knowing Jerome Williams. Bouncing ball. Galvis has it at short, two up, two down. The Phillies on defense this season near the bottom of the National League. They've committed 69 airs. Jeff Brancourt is in left field. He was in right last night. Ben Revere's the center fielder, and Dominic Brown is in right. Franco, Galvis, Blanco, and Ruff from third base to first inning. Veteran Carlos Ruiz making his 61st start of the season for Jerome Williams. And over at third base, uh, Michael Franco over there is one of the Phillies' top prospects. He's played 61 games over at third base. He's committed nine errors. And I suspect he's going to get a lot of action with this right-handed dominated Blue Jays lineup. Made a couple of plays in last night's game. Showed a lot of instincts. And this infield is pretty young and athletic. Bautista, good to see him back in the lineup. He had a rough at bat in his final at bat, and afterwards he described his leg issue as a cramp, and it's good to see him back in the lineup tonight. Bautista hits it off the end of the bat. Ruff is back. The first baseman spins around, makes the catch. Easy in it for Jerome Williams. He, like Dickey, retires the side in order. Scoreless after one at Rogers Center.
last night, felt that cramp in his hamstring as soon as he broke out of the batter's box. It's then he dialed it back and said, I didn't want to aggravate it at all. He's DHing tonight. Bautista actually is continuing to rehab the shoulder that bothered him for much of the first half of the season. And guys, he's actually doing maintenance that most pitchers do. He's trying to regain the strength in that shoulder. And as a result, it's a program that most of the starter starting pitchers use in their repertoire, not the position players. Hey, Rash, that's not really that uncommon given the fact that it was a shoulder injury. And, of course, pitchers always conscious of keeping their shoulders strong. They call them the Job exercises. And Dr. Frank Job, the late great orthopedic surgeon, is the one that developed those exercises to strengthen that entire rotator cuff of the shoulder. This is Ryan Howard, a big first baseman who served as the DH in this interleague series. Phillies and Blue Jays will meet later on this month in a two-game series. Actually, it'll be in August. So we're near the end of July. Get to go to Philly for a couple of games against the Phillies. Pete McCannon took over this ball club on the 27th of June. Bob McClure, the pitching coach to McCannon's right. Larry Bowe, the bench coach on love. Steve Henderson in red jacket is the hitting coach. A veteran coaching staff for sure. Two-two pitch. Howard hits it off his leg. All the people in the Blue Jays dugout are saying, base hit, base hit. I think the fans <laughs> are too. They're getting pretty fired up also. <laughs> That time it hit the dirt first before it hit Big Ryan. You know what? I give him credit for a quick thinking after that ball hit him and where it ended up down the left side of the infield. Back three call. Dickey delivers that knuckleball in there for a strike. Four straight retired by Dickey to start the game. That's the first strikeout. Well, if he's got this kind of knuckleball, watch it shake as it makes its way towards home plate and then puts it on the corner like that, he's going to have a good game. He has been really good. Just five earned runs over his last three starts. If Fran Coor is a free swinger, it's so for two against R.A. Dickey. Lines this one to left. Valencia is going to have it go over his head off the wall. He played it out of bounds, and Francoeur has a one-out double. It's his first hit off of Dickey, and he lined it over the head of Danny Valencia in left. You know, one of the hardest plays for an outfielder, if you're not used to playing the outfield, is the line drive. And it's better to just try and stay behind the ball as much as possible. It looked like Danny cut across on that one, and the ball took off. And then ends up over his head. And I thought he had a chance to get him at second base, but he fumbled it just a little bit off the wall. But those line drives like that, you got to really listen to your teammates to help you to stay back. Dominic Brown goes after the first pitch. It's a pop-up. Goins out from second. He makes a nice catch out there in right field near the foul line. Brown going after the first pitch pops out. Frank Coor remains at second. Ryan Goins playing second base. Devin Travis left the game after his second at bat in last night's game. He's dealing with the same injury that forced him on the disabled list earlier on. That left shoulder injury. And we are hoping for the best for, for Devin. He got a chance to have an x-ray MRI. The doctor took a look at it today. And he's hoping, he's hoping to be back in there. But I'm not sure. Now, John Gibbons said that Travis told him he wanted to play and try to play through it, but we have seen this before, and he tried to do that initially, and that cost him a few extra days. Took him a long time to get over it first time. Two outs, Francoeur at second. This is Carlos Ruiz, the catcher. Two twenty-three for Ruiz, having an off-season offensively. Dickey spent three seasons in the National League East with the Mets. This is his 11th career start against Philadelphia. He has a 4-4 four four record. Ruiz hits it down the right side. That's going to reach the seats out of play. A lot of big swingers in the lineup for the Phillies. Not a lot of power. 
but a lot of swingers, so that should match up for R.A. tonight. There you see the numbers we're talking about. Very good ERA for Dickey against the Phillies. Phillies have changed their approach somewhat since the All-Star break. They're much more aggressive at the plate right now. Tell you what, they're hitting everything. Getting a lot of extra base hits, scoring a lot of runs. All right, Dickey's pitched very well here over his last four starts. The ERA at 252, opponents hitting under 200. He's getting decent run support, but timing hasn't been very good for Dickey. That hasn't translated into wins. Ground ball, Goins. A couple of steps to his left. Dickey's out of the top of the second. Brand Coor with a double. He's stranded as he... Phillies go down to R.A. Dickey's off to another good start. Colabello in the lineup will face Jerome Williams when we come back. baseball today the Dodgers got better landing Matt Latos and Michael Morse we'll have a special MLB Central trade deadline program Friday on Sportsnet Four Eastern one Pacific which MLB teams will add that elusive piece to fortify their playoff push find out then Four Eastern one Pacific on Friday Buck. Arash, that's going to be a very important day as the teams try to get themselves in good position to make a run for the postseason Jerome Williams Pitching with that pink glove, something he has done for quite a while. That's a tribute to his late mother, Deborah, who passed away because of breast cancer in 2001. I think he was one of the first guys we noticed with these mm -hmm. pink gloves, and he always has fond memories of his mom. They grew up in Hawaii. He was born in Hawaii and went to high school in Honolulu. He was a first round pick of the San Francisco Giants. He, in fact, was traded from the Giants to the Cubs for Latroy Hawkins in 2005. How about that? In baseball, everything kind of weaves together. 33 years old now. Chris Colabella was not in the original lineup. Edwin Encarnacion was penciled in to play first. Edwin took a couple of rounds of batting practice and then Picked up his first baseman's glove, picked up his bat, walked back, and had a conference with John Gibbons and pointed to his left hand, and he was subsequently scratched from the lineup. You can see he's got that knuckle bandaged on his left hand. Said he originally injured it in last night's ball game. Tried to take some BP. Ball wasn't coming off his bat very well. You can see he was laboring through that. Well, the bellow jumps on that high pitch and drills it into center field. 
A leadoff base hit here in the second. That'll bring Russell Martin to the plate. He's been red hot since the All-Star break. He's been hitting every type of pitch, and he's been hitting it everywhere. You can see that box right there, that strike zone, filled up with all kind of different colored dots right there, representing the sinker and the curveball and the changeup, the cutter and the fastball. He's been hitting everything everywhere, filling up that box, driving the ball to left field and driving the ball to right center field. Russell Martin is 11 for 30 since the All-Star break. He had a great swing out west at 444 in the six games against Oakland and Seattle. Breaking ball for a strike. Martin has a home run against Jerome Williams. He's two for six for his career. He has 14 homers for the season. Russ has done a great job of hitting the ball to the opposite field. He had an opposite field home run in Oakland and drove the ball very effectively to the opposite field. You see his numbers over his last 12 games. And when you saw the location of all those pitches he was hitting hard, I was a bit surprised that so many of them were bunched in the middle because he hit so many of those balls to the alley in right center and down the right field line. Teams will look at the spray charts and they will notice where all his hits are coming, and that's why you saw our, the defense for the Phillies as straight away as you can play it right there. Center field, look at the outfielders. Everybody straight away. You know, there's so much information in baseball today, but how do you evaluate six at bats? That's what Russell Martin has against Jerome Williams. You don't know if Martin faced him when he's red hot or if he was slumping, whether Williams was dealing with the flu. You just don't know all these subtleties about how these numbers break down. I think these are just numbers, the numbers just based on right handed pitchers Blanco goes to Galvis a nice turn at second and Martin bounces into the double play that erases that leadoff single but Blanco's making just his fourth start at second base he was at shortstop last night Galvis the shortstop made a nice turn over the back Hernandez with the day off has been playing second base we noticed that last night you and I were talking about that this afternoon how athletic young the infield is for the Philadelphia Phillies they move well they all have really good arms that time that was an athletic play by both the second baseman and the shortstop. Obviously there are plenty of opportunities for playing time with Philadelphia. They have 38 and 63 despite the great start to the second half. Danny Valencio a bat with two outs and nobody on. First pitch cutter for a strike. But I like your point about uh, the matchups when you look at the numbers against Williams, when they were done, when they were put in there. I think that's where baseball instincts come in. Here's the framework of how we're going to use it. You guys work with it from there. That time Valencia sends it back through the middle for another base hit off of Jerome Williams. Well, that time, Danny Valencia stays on that pitch. We mentioned Valencia's numbers are different this season against right-handed pitches. He improved dramatically. And there's the shifting that we were talking about right there. Shortstop, if he plays him straight up, he makes that ball easily, makes that play. But they dramatically shifted on him. They had a second baseman up the middle. And he finds a hole. Yeah, and there's just not enough information to play that exaggerated shift in my mind. And we see everybody do it. Ezekiel Carrera traps it up the first baseline and Williams tried to flip it with his glove. He got hung up in the webbing of his glove. That'll be an infield hit for Carrera. Valencia moves to second. The Blue Jays with three hits this inning, but there are two outs and runners at first and second. Really not much more that Williams can do with that one. He had to deal with the runner in the baseline if he could have got over there and catch it. I don't think he had time to make the tag on Carrera because he runs too well. The only play is take it and throw it through the runner or come through the baseline and throw around the runner. Carrera is actually by him as he goes to field that ball. So he'll take the base hit. 
Williams has really bounced around in his career. We mentioned his career began with the Giants. He came to the big leagues in 2003. Then he went from the Giants to the Cubs with that trade for Latroy Hawkins in 2005. Two outs. This is Kevin Pillar. Pillar may be a candidate eventually to hit in that leadoff spot. If Devin Travis is unavailable for an extended time. You say well why would he be a candidate. I just think. He is probably one of the better options if you want to get to Lewinsky into an RBI position in this lineup. For tonight's game in game one John Gibbons wanted to Lewinsky in the top because Travis wasn't available. And he didn't want to mess with Donaldson Bautista. And initially, Edwin and Palacios. And everybody hit in the regular spots. Pilar drives it to right. Dominic Brown, the right fielder, is there. The Blue Jays get three hits in inning, but the double play erases a couple of those base runners. Still scoreless as we head to the third. will be at the Jay's shop of the Toronto Eaton Center signing autographs from noon till one o'clock. Now one autograph per person and no lineups prior to 10 a.m. But tomorrow's your chance at the lunch hour to meet Roberto Asuna and Chris Colabello. Buck? Great opportunity to meet too the younger Blue Jays and the Blue Jays always out and about in the community. They have made several trips to Sick Kids Hospital to meet, meet the children there and bring them a little joy. There in rough, the first baseman. Boy, Dickey has thrown a lot of strikes recently with that knuckleball. Has him throwing very well. His last three starts, opponent's batting average at 143. Yeah, early in the season, I thought uh, about the middle of April until about the middle of May, RA's command of the knuckleball was not very good. He was falling behind a lot of counts. He'd come in with a fastball. He just did not have it. He had some short outings. He'd sprinkle in a good outing here and there. But over his last 10, you know, he shortened his stride a little bit. He's got to concentrate and make sure the hand stays on the ball a little bit longer and, and behind it. And ever since then, he has been putting it constantly in the strike zone. We talk about those last three starts for R.A. Dickey, and he has had much better command. He is truly on a roll, Pat. Certainly is. At the Chicago White Sox, he was matched up against Jeff Smarge. He lost that game two to nothing, but he only gave up two earned runs in seven innings. Then versus Tampa Bay on July the 18th, six innings, just one run, and then a really good outing at Oakland, eight and a third inning, and just. Two runs in eight and a third inning. That was his first road win in ten starts. Yeah, he had really struggled to win on the road, and the Blue Jays caught a break on that day game in Oakland. That was the game scheduling for Scott Casmir, and he had been traded 
that morning to Houston. So he did not make the start. It was a start by the bullpen. Drew Pomerantz started that game. Didn't he move up a day also because Drew Hutchison was feeling under the weather? Hutchison's move was start was moved back twice to Lewinsky. Couldn't make the grab. Looked like he got a piece of that little looper as Andres Blanco reaches with the one out base hit. Just over the glove of Tulowitzki, it's short. All six foot three of his frame, he reaches up with that long glove, and it's just out of his reach. Second hit of the night for the Phillies, a soft liner into center field. Tulowitzki is 30 years old. He is from California, grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, he played college at Long Beach State. First round pick of the Rockies seventh overall. And that was an interesting draft as the Blue Jays picked sixth in that draft and selected Ricky Romero out of Cal State Fullerton, the biggest rival of the Long Beach State baseball team. Ground ball to left side to Lewitsky backhand throws to second. What a nice play. Tulowitzki took his time, and when he turned and fired, he threw a strike to get the lead runner at second. That's something that we have seen from Tulo for a long time, that jump in the air, spin and throw type of move, reminiscent of his hero, Derek Jeter. That's why he wears number two right there. We've seen Jeter do it for years. We've now seen Tulo do it for a long time. This takes away a base hit from Ben Revere. Nice strong arm and an accurate throw to second. Two down. Ready, Galvis. Revere is a threat to run. He's got 24 steals. He's been caught five times. And obviously, the Phillies don't have a lot of power, so they're a threat to run. Dickey understands the running game very well because he throws that knuckleball. He holds the ball, he freezes the base runner. Then he'll unload quickly, really messing with the timing. He has really got to give Russell Martin a chance to throw out Steeler. He's going to go at some point. You got to feel like Revere is going to try and get in scoring position. Pop into center. Pilar says, I got it. And he does. Good defensive play behind R.A. Dickey. Tulowitzki at shortstop went to his right deep in the hole and made a good, strong throw to second. Still a scoreless game. Williams back to the bottom of the third. Sportsnet magazine is available free for download featuring, yeah, Josh Donaldson, the cover boy. This baseball issue has all the best stories from the MLB season. Visit sportsnet.ca slash magazine for more information. Thank you very much, Arash. Always a great read. Pick up the Sportsnet magazine and check out those great articles. It'll be 9-1-2 for the Blue Jays in the bottom of the third. No score. 
Ryan Goins takes that pitch off the plate outside. There's a base hit to right. Goins hustling down the line. A leadoff single. That'll bring Troy Tulowitzki to the plate, playing in his first game with the Blue Jays, and he's quite an accomplished player. How about the hardware, some of the hardware that he has brought home and some of the achievements. He's a five-time All-Star. There are the years that Troy did that. Two gold gloves in 2010 and 2011. Those two silver slugger awards in 10 and 11 also. Become the third National League shortstop to win both awards in consecutive seasons since 1980. Barry Larkin, Edgar Renteria, the other two who did that. Takes his strike from Williams to Lewinsky. Was second in the Rookie of the Year voting in 2007. Ryan Braun won the Rookie of the Year. To Lewinsky had 24 homers and 99 ribbies in his rookie season. A 1 1, no score. Ryan Goins with the leadoff single. Goins playing at second base tonight in place of Devin Travis. Donaldson is on deck. Ah. Whiskey wasn't sure about that, but it's 0-2. To Whiskey struck out his first time up on a curveball from Williams. Between seven and nine o'clock tonight. That's during the game. Just go out there and play the game. And he's feeling comfortable hanging breaking ball. See it. That ball was crushed to left field. Josh Donaldson. Well, you talk about a murderer's row. Tula Whiskey, Donaldson, Bautista, Encarnacion. What a beautiful swing on that high fastball and a distinctive crack of the bat. That was a no doubter. It was loud. Donaldson behind 0 2. Tried to slip a fastball by him up. You didn't get it up high enough. Tell you if that doesn't. Energize the team right there. New guy comes in and hits a home run. Hits a home run on an 0-2 pitch. Blue Jays hadn't scored since the second inning of last night's ball game. To Lewitsky's 13th home run of the season, first as a Blue Jay. Donaldson gets a piece of it to stay alive. Tulowitzki wearing his number two. Louis Rivera, the third base coach, was wearing that prior to the trade, and obviously Rivera passed that number two over to Tulowitzki. Donaldson fights it off and goes against the shift. Josh Donaldson with two strikes goes the other way and Breaks up the shift. Larry Boa was talking to Donaldson before the game yesterday and said, I'm playing you to shift. 
Donaldson says, I'll get a single. He says, get all the singles you want. <laughs> hey, if you're going to get a single ahead of the rest of these guys, why not? Especially with two strikes. That ball the other way. Bo is responsible for the defense, and he and Donaldson were trading barbs yesterday before the game. Donaldson also told Larry Boa, I want to play like you guys did when you played. Jose Bautista he popped out to the first baseman, his first time up. Donaldson and Boa have similar attributes. They hate to lose. It's off the end of the bat. Blanco will flip and drop. That ball is not caught. Kerwin Danley, the second base umpire, is holding up his hand to indicate out, but I don't think the shortstop Freddie Galvez ever had possession of that ball. And this is going to be an interesting discussion between Gibbons and Danley. I think they're going to look at this one. They're both now looking back toward the Blue Jays' dugout, but he's got to have possession of this ball and be in the act of retrieving it. And, well, I guess that is possession he looked like he had it in the glove watch his foot there the ball is coming out he's never on the base he's never on the base he never secured the ball while he was on the base you know it happened so quickly and the second base umpire thought that he was on the base but we had a chance to slow things down yes he caught the ball yes he was trying to transfer it into his glove but he did it all before he touched second base. The ball's out of the hand. So Donaldson, in my mind, is going to be awarded second base. Yes, no question about it. I think he's going to be safe because the ball was in Galvis's glove, but he hadn't reached second yet. And then he started the transfer. He still wasn't on the bag when the ball came out. He had never made contact with the bag at second. So now this is going to be one that they'll have to look at the two things. Was he on the base? And now here's Joe West, the crew chief. He's got the information, and there's the correct call. So once again, the Blue Jays get a favorable decision. The play on the field is overturned because there's clear and convincing evidence. And good job by John Gibbons to challenge that play. So Bautista is aboard. You know, that was a classic example, Buck, of trying to make something that really, you know, if you just make one out, you weren't going to turn two there. Catch the ball, get that lead runner with a nice little flip over to the shortstop. Let him catch it, touch the bag. Just get one out, trying to make something happen there, and it's going to cost him. you got now two runners on and nobody out. It's a fielder's choice for Bautista. The air is charged with the shortstop. Freddy Galvis, that's his 12th air of the season. Now Chris Colabello, he's already singled here tonight. Donaldson's at second. Bautista's at first. Still nobody out. You cannot give the Blue Jays extra outs in this lineup. Seen it all season long. Team starts walking the Blue Jays, start pitching around them, start making errors. They really know how to finish off innings. Down and away for a strike. It's one and one. Colabella can really handle the pitch outside. He has the ability to drive it to the alley in right center. We've seen him hit the ball out of the ballpark to right field here. Colabella has nine home runs for the season. fouled into the catcher's mitt. Colabella is one of the best Blue Jays at batting with runners in scoring position coming into this game batting 292. Blue Jays lead it 2 to nothing on Troy Tulowitzki's two run home run. Up to second base to Galvis, and they're not going to have time to turn two. They get Bautista on the force out at second. That's the first out of the inning.
Make your renovation a cut above during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Beautiful night in Toronto. 30 degrees at the start of game. A very humid night. It feels like it's 36. Also, Martin, the batter. Martin grounded into a 4 6 3 double play in the second. Now he's going to look for a ball up. Remember, we were talking his last time up that. Looking for a ball away that he can drive the other way. Now he's looking for something that he can get up in the air and get into the outfield to pick up this easy RBI. Give me your impression of the way the Phillies infield is set up against Russell Martin. Well, right now. They're halfway for the double play in the middle of the diamond, but they're playing him too much to pull. I mean, we've talked about it, and we've, we've watched Russell. We've had the advantage of watching him for the last two weeks hit ball after ball to right field on a line. Well, he's taking a shot to that right side there. He could drive a semi through that right side of the infield. Blanco at second. He's near the bag. And these Blue Jays on the bench, they're always talking about the pitcher and how they can get him out of the game. Stay on that breaking ball. Goins singled the start to and came in on the Tulowitzki home run. See, when you're looking for a ball up in the strike zone to hit deep into the outfield, that little thing right there that we just saw, that little breaking ball down, you're not going to swing at it. You've seen so many in your career, you recognize that that ball's down. If you swing at it, you're going to hit a ground ball. He's looking to get the ball in the air. Ground ball. Galvis, Blanco, first base to Rook, double play. Martin grounds into the inning ending double play. But Troy Tulowitzki in his first game with the Blue Jays. In his second and bat on an 0 2 pitch, takes Jerome Williams deep to the second deck in left. A two run home run. Making a lot of new friends in Toronto. Shoulder, no structural damage was shown in the pictures. Plenty of inflammation. While Travis has not yet been placed on the disabled list, it doesn't appear as if the Blue Jays have the patience to keep him around if he's going to miss a significant period of time. Travis told us today what he learned from his previous experience while playing through an injured is it's not going to get better if it's injured. Now, if Travis is placed on the DL, guys, because Felix Dubron was DFA today, designated for assignment, they would be able to add one of Mudanori Kawasaki or Jonathan Diaz to the 40-man roster. 
Well, it sure appears as though Travis is headed to a DL stint, and that's unfortunate. He's really a good player and really picked it up right where he left off, but he wasn't good the last time he tried to play through it, and I think he understands that now. Of course, he didn't want to go on the DL the first time. In his rookie season, he was off to a great start. He was the American League Rookie of the Month in the month of April. But you can't play hurt. I talked to him today in the locker room, and he was really down and discouraged. He knows that he wants to be part of this team. He knows he wants to play at a home run in last night's game, but you can't play if you're injured. And he was really upset. One and two. Now you can imagine the enthusiasm with a new player coming to your team and two new players, in fact, Tulowitzki and Troy Hawkins. And you don't want to miss any time. Michael Franco takes a leadoff walk here in the fourth. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Here's Ryan Howard. He was caught looking at strike three his first time up there. He takes a knuckleball strike. Howard, the DH in this series. 18 homers, 53 RBIs for Howard for the season. This is a fly ball. A high fly. Pilar comes over from center and calls for it. Once he clears the way. So Howard's retired. That's the first out of the inning. Jeff Francoeur doubled over Valencia's head in left field. That went up against the wall for Francoeur, his 12th double of the season. Right there, you could hear R.A. Dickey holler front to let Russell Martin know it's close. Martin really got hit on that left hand. He's trying to regroup a little bit. This is a very challenging game for Russell Martin when he catches Dickey. That ball is all over the place. You can see the frustration on his face. It physically beats you up. You never catch it in the pocket of your glove. Something happened right there on that play. I, I don't know if uh, he twisted his wrist back trying to catch that ball or what. But you can tell he's upset. The umpire was giving him a little bit of time to regroup just a little bit there. You can see some frustration after that last pitch. Looks like he took it on the thumb. I think this is what happened. He got hit on the thumb of that glove. And watch where he hits it. Yep, right on that thumb. Hit outside the pocket of that glove. And speaking from experience, you get hit on the outside of that thumb, it'll bend it back and really create problems for you in the base of that thumb. There you can see it's on that mm -hmm. left thumb. He has taken a beating on that thumb. Francoeur drives it deep to right. Carrera backing up in front of the warning track. You know that last one we showed right there, Buck, was during the warm-up in between the innings and that knuckleball bent that thumb back. You can see he's got some tape there. A lot of times catchers will wear almost like a hardened cast on that thumb to give it some support. Yeah, it's basically like a holster for a gun where that thumb fits right in there. It's hard plastic and it'll protect you from that thumb bending back. But it's difficult to do it with a knuckleball. But Martin, and, and this is one thing you don't think about enough, and I'll speak to you as a catcher. The beatings that these guys take, not only catching knuckleballs, but during the course of a season. And then you say, well, how come Russell's been so inconsistent offensively? 
Well, because he's banged up. Some days he feels terrible. Other days he feels great. And that's why you always have to give extra credit to those great offensive catchers. Because if you can put up numbers catching 125, 30 games a year and still maintain a high average in production at the plate, I mean, you're bordering on Hall of Fame caliber. You know, that that's why some of the great ones who stuck around a long, long time, I'm talking about the Bob Boones. Pudge Rodriguez, Pudge Mike Rodriguez, Piazza, Carlton Fisk. Pudge, he's in the Hall of Fame. Played a long, long time, and they were great defensive catchers and offensive catchers, but you get beat up. You just watch it day after day as you watch these guys. And you saw Russell's left thumb. That's on his hand. And you know, as a hitter, anytime you have any kind of injury to your hand, especially your bottom hand, if you're a right handed hitter, takes away all your power. Yeah. And Russell would never acknowledge that. But it does come into play. If you go back and look at Russell's performance when Navarro was on the DL and Josh Toley was catching Dickey, Russell's numbers were the best of the season. Dominic Brown at the plate. He pulls this one foul. Brown popped out to Goins in the second. Two balls, two strikes. The Blue Jays lead by two. Dickey with a strikeout. Dickey has struck out three through four innings. The high pitch gets Dominic Brown. He struck out Howard. Ruff and now Brown and that high knuckleball. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Presented by the 2015 Honda Civic. Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row. And the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Russell Martin dealing with that knuckleball. And you can see him looking at his left thumb. And that's not a pleasant feeling. I've been there. You get banged on that thumb two or three times. And, you know, it just won't go away. At night, you can put it in a cup of ice and try to keep the swelling down. But Russell's an everyday player, and you just got to deal with it. Danny Valencia will lead things on. He rips it past the shortstop. Galvez into left field. Too hot to handle. Should be another base hit for Valencia. He's two for two. On the left, this is a pregame pitch, a warm-up pitch from Dickey, and it catches Martin right on that thumb. And it just bends it straight back. And then last inning, one more time off the thumb. Ricochets off that thumb, and 
He's feeling it right now. Well, and two, that knuckleball glove is designed to be very light. So you don't have the standard padding in that thumb area that you do on a regular catcher's mitt. Bigger pocket, less Less padding, padding around less it, padding. sure. Even when it hits in the pocket, it has more of an impact than it does on a regular glove, even though it's 78 miles an hour. You were talking about soaking your thumb in ice after a game. Then a bun out in front of home. Carrera drops it down perfectly. Williams goes to first, and Carrera moves Valencia into scoring position. That'll be a sack bunt. He was running for a base hit. The pitch just wasn't a good pitch to do it, but at minimum, the Blue Jays get a runner in scoring position for the 8-9 and nine hitter. Fifth sacrifice bunt for Carrera, 21st for the Blue Jays. It's a weapon they have used a little bit more this year. Just to finish that thought, I used to soak my thumb also at nighttime after every game, but it was from, my right one. From hitting. From getting jams <laughs> all the time. You needed a game saver. I'm telling you. Kevin Pilar lined out to you right his first time up. <laughs> Ball and a strike to the center fielder. Decent numbers for Pilar in his first full season as a regular. 280 with runners in scoring position. Pilar, I think, eventually, another year or two, he probably profiles as a pretty good number two hitter. Somebody that can run a little bit, handle a bat. Just depends on what the rest of your lineup is like. But I think right now he is best suited to bat eight in this lineup. Couldn't say that a year ago. More strikeouts last year. We were talking to Alex Anthopoulos, and he was telling us a little bit about uh, Pilar coming into this season. He said, Kevin, I know you don't have the greatest of on-base percentages. You strike out too much. You don't walk enough. Okay, if you're not going to walk, you can't strike out. So he's done a much better job, I think, this season of putting the ball in play and not giving easy outs to pitchers on strikeouts. We haven't seen a lot of balls that he swings outside the strike zone. Yeah, this is his 101st game of the season. He has 58 strikeouts. He's done a pretty good job of cutting down the strikeouts. He still doesn't walk, and he laughed about that today when we were talking. He has 18 walks and 371 at-bats. So if you're not going to walk, you can't strike out. That just doesn't give the defense a chance to feel the ball. doesn't give your, your team, the offense, a chance to, to get a base from it. The strikeout is a worthless at bat. Doesn't do anything. Two and two, one out. On the ground. Franco looks back Valencia. He almost took too much time. Pilar always hustles up the line. It was bang, bang at first. As Franco took a couple of extra steps towards second to chase Valencia back to the he, back. He didn't need to look the runner back because where he fielded the ball was right in the baseline. He just didn't have to give him a quick look and it almost cost him. Kevin Pilar plays the game the right way. He is hustling all the way. And look how close he makes that play at first base. Routine ground ball to third. Goins, Ryan Goins, the second baseman, singled and scored in the third. If Devin Travis should happen to go on the disabled list, Goins will get an extended opportunity to play every day at second. Goins would prefer that Devin Travis never goes on the disabled list and he just rotates as the extra infield. But he has made 29 starts at second, replacing Travis the first time Devin went on the deal. We'll see how that one plays out. Uh, I know one thing that the Blue Jays said pregame is they can't go too long playing shorthanded. 
Just can't do it. Got 60 games left after this one. 0 2. Inside off the plate. Isn't it interesting? And you start to see as you go, man, 162 games, and now you've got 60 games left. I know there's a lot of people who wish they had a few more games left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, you know. That's why I think every game is important right now. Every one of them. Isn't that interesting? And that's the mindset of, of managers and coaches. They say, hey, every game's important. And, and it is. It's always the same. But for some reason, those games in April and May just don't seem to have the impact of August and September. And it's the same number. Same number of games. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Bouncing ball. Bronco gets the high hop at second. Goins is retired. The Blue Jays will leave a base runner. We've played four innings. It's 2 nothing Blue Jays. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong. TD Comfort Zone, our special guest of TD. While over in the Jays Community Clubhouse, we welcome the guests from the East Scarborough Boys and Girls Club. Hope everybody's enjoying the game tonight. Arash, it's a great night for baseball. Perfect night at 30 degrees at the start of play. The roof is wide open. And Blue Jays have a 2-0 lead. Phillies are batting in the fifth. Carlos Ruiz, Darren Ruff, and Andres Blanco for Philadelphia. So doing a good job of receiving that strike. Ball on a strike. He wanted that one, and you can see on pitch tracker that looked like it was in the strike zone. Pretty close. It was a high strike, but it sure looked like it was close enough to call for a strike. Ground ball to Lewiski gets a nice hop, takes his time, and throws Ruiz out. You know the uh, problems that we were talking about that Russell had last inning catching that knuckleball. Does that make you concentrate just a little bit harder to see that ball in your glove? Absolutely, it does. You want to make sure that you catch it in the pocket, and don't catch it on that thumb again. I mean, each time you hit it, it's like hitting yourself with a hammer on that thumb. You don't <laughs> want to do it again. So you tell yourself, okay, catch it right in the webbing. Which is really kind of counterproductive because you don't want to tense up when you catch it. And you want a lot of movement. That's like <laughs> the Little League coach screaming to the shortstop, relax! <laughs> That'll really relax them. <laughs> 
I was just thinking of, you know, what can R.A. Dickey do to help out his catcher? But there's nothing he can't no, can throw more fastball. No, he wants it to move. Yeah. He, that's when he's at its best, and it's just the position that Russell's in. You know, once you take one off the thumb, it's going to be there the rest of the game at least. Number nine hitters, Andres Blanco. There was a fastball. Got ahead of the number nine hitter with a heater. Says popped up. Martin over near the Blue Jays dugout says, I got it. And he does. Dickey has retired six straight. Getting some support in the field from his shortstop, Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki's also hit a two run home run. The Blue Jays lead it 2 0. Tula will lead things off when we come back. The Blue Jays meet the Kansas City Royals at 7 o'clock. You can get to the ballpark early for the pregame festival outside of Gate 10. And Gates actually open an hour earlier at 4.30. Special guest Chad Brownlee will be doing a live performance in the licensed area. For more information, go to BlueJays.com. Kulowitzki drills this. It's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Kulowitzki's around first. He'll go to second, standing up with a leadoff double. His 20th double of the season. Tulowitzki has played in Rogers Center before. Go back to June of 2007, and he had a very productive trip here with the Rockies. Well, there's something about this ballpark, uh, the batter's box, the batter's eyes, something he likes because he did this off of Ty Tobenheim. High fastball, see it, June 22nd, 2007, deep to left center field. He followed that up the next day with another one down the left field line. He's already homered tonight, and he has also now hit a double. That second home run was off Jeremy Accardo in a 10th inning loss. He has three home runs in four games here at Rogers Center. It's a pretty torrid pace. <laughs> That's the eighth hit the Blue Jays have racked up against Jerome Williams. Donaldson has a signal. Donaldson crossed up the defense, and they had shifted three defenders to the left side of second. And now the second baseman, Blanco, is back more straight away. 0-2 to Donaldson. The second baseman's really moving on the pitch to get back over there. Josh is in a position, I think, with the lead. Try to drive him in. That's what you're up there for. You're a good hitter. Try to drive him in. You're not trying to necessarily move that runner. This is deep to right field. 
field. Brown's going to make a catch. Tulo's tagging at second. Here's the throw. And it will be late at third base as Tulowitzki advances on the fly ball to right. Donaldson with a productive at bat. Yeah, he, he made a bid Buck to drive him in, and he got that ball in the middle of the plate. And instead of trying to roll over and pull that ball, stay back just a little bit longer. Watch how he waits, breaking ball, and then he drives that ball to right center field and actually moves the runner. So now Bautista gets the benefit of that good at bat. He's got a runner at third, one out. Bautista is third in the American League with 66 RBIs. Donaldson and Kendris Morales are tied at 68. And there you see the drawn in infield. Boy, one fielder on the right side of the diamond for the Phillies. Now, having said that, I can't believe that the Phillies would actually try and pitch to him right here with the base open. You wouldn't think they would challenge him into strikes on that's for sure. Unless it's a mistake from Williams. Base hit. Tulowitzki will come in to score. Bautista picks up the RBI. A hot shot through the left side. RBI number 767 for Bautista. Hey, the infield in like that. You are right on top of a big pull hitter like Jose Bautista. That's no fun on the left side. And he hits it so hard, he hits it through three defenders. There are the three defenders on the left side. And fastball right down Broadway. So I can't believe they were even going to pitch to him. Yeah, it really didn't make much sense with Colabello behind him. And that's not a knock on Colabello. It's just a testimony of Bautista's ability to drive in runs. Why would you let him... Drive him in right there. Well, if you pitch around him, now you can set up the double play and get out of the inning and not give up a run. Phillies have turned two double plays tonight one in the second, one in the third. Three nothing Blue Jays. Williams wants to talk to the catcher. He wants the new baseball. Didn't like the way that one felt. Took a little time and said, give me a new ball. Let's start over. Colabella well, pokes it to the right side. Blanco ranges to his left. Makes a nice play. Second baseman throws out Colabello. Two down. Bautista to second. Oh, he almost got that ball through the right side. Blanco shows a lot of range from second base. Justin DeFreitas is loosening up for the Phillies. Pete McCann and talking to his pitching coach Bob McClure and they want to check on the status of their bullpen. Russell Martin is grounded into two double plays tonight. Bautista's at second. Tell you what would make that thumb feel a lot better right now? A little flare to right <laughs> for an RBI single. You are absolutely right. It's also where you want to hit the ball squarely on the barrel of the bat. You don't want to get jammed. Two balls, no strikes to you, Russell Martin. Bautista singled and drove in a run. He's now at second. 
This ball is driven to right. Dominic Brown's not going to get it. Here comes Bautista around third. Russell Martin is headed for second. Here's the throw, but it's not in time. Russell Martin, an RBI double with two outs. His 48th ribby of the season. That'll make that thumb feel a lot better. You wanted solid contact, and he got it. I'm telling you that he's been hitting the ball with authority the other way by letting that ball get a little bit deeper, not committing too quickly, letting the ball come to him. It's a four-seamer right there. And Russell stays behind that ball. Watch him how he stays behind. He doesn't go out there to get it. Watch, how, watch the head straight down, and the ball comes to it. He's got the full body behind that one. Beautiful approach for Russell Martin. It's really served him well lately. McCannon to the mound. That's going to be it for Jerome Williams. He leaves down four to nothing. He's given up ten hits. Justin Freitas will come into the ball game to face Danny Valencia. We're in the fifth. Blue Jays have a four nothing lead behind R. A. Dickey. You can check out Sportsnet's MLB Live Tracker live during every big league game for play-by-play -play updates, batter hit zone charts, and real-time winning percentage. Access the MLB Live Tracker by clicking on any baseball game matchup on sportsnet.ca or through the SN app during the game. New pitcher for Philadelphia is Justin DeFreitas, the right-hander. 44 games now for DeFreitas. 52 and two-thirds innings. You see that on that board right there. He's tied his career high in innings pitch this season. That's 43 appearances. He has had a lot more success against left-handers. Lefties hitting 195. Righties over 300. Fastball sweeping slider. And there was a slider right there to Valencia. Manny Valencia's perfect tonight. He's two for two. Average back over 300 for the season. John Williams goes four and two thirds innings. He gives up 10 hits, four runs to this point. Russell Martin at second is his responsibility. No walks in one strikeout. First batter of the ball game. Struck out Troy Tulowitzki on a curveball, and then Tulowitzki got his revenge. Hit a two run home run and a double. Came around and scored in the fifth. Valencia strikes out. Freitas ends the fifth inning. The Blue Jays add two more runs in the bottom of the fifth. They take a four nothing lead as we head to the sixth. And here comes the home hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Natura Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
70,000 fans will receive that Russell Martin bobblehead. Monday, August 3rd, Blue Jays Twins. It's a matinee, a 107 start. All part of the long weekend in the city. But the Russell Martin bobblehead. Pretty authentic looking a rash. And you can see that poster on the side of the Rogers Center. There's Russell with that mask propped up on his helmet. And the bobblehead depicting that perfectly. So make sure you come out for that giveaway. R.A. Dickey works to Ben Revere to start the sixth. Line to Tulowitzki. One down. Ari Dickey's really been throwing the ball well of late, and you look at his numbers in his first 17 starts, the slugging percentage against the knuckleball, the 421. Well, boy, it's dropped dramatically over his last three. Those last three starts at Chicago versus Tampa Bay here, and then at Oakland, the slugging percentage dropped to 229. You know what else dropped? The batting average against to 143 over those last three starts. His strike percentage is up. I think that's one of the reasons why Buck is because he's throwing that knuckleball. They're quality pitches and he's throwing more strikes with it. Well, and the walks are down too. You look at early in the season, he was up in four and five walk territory just about every start, but in his last four starts, the most he's walked in a ball game two. He walked two, two, one, and one in his last four starts, and that's always going to help our aim. You get more knuckleballs in the strike zone. You get a higher swing percentage, and they're just not going to square that ball up. Let's a fly ball off the bat of Freddie Galvis. Pilar makes the catch. Two up, two down here in the six. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update for us. Twenty one runs last night and the Rangers actually had a five nothing lead after one. They started for the Yankees has since been designated for assignment. And when you think about the Yankees scoring 20 or more runs they've done it seven times since 2000 scoring 20 or more runs in a game. That ball is ripped to left field. Michael Frankel has a base hit. Comes with two outs here in the sixth. Yeah, they were down five to nothing early in that game. And the response to that, 11 in the second inning. They scored 11 without a home run in that second inning. And then they just continued. The first time Major League team is led by five more runs in its first time at bat. But came back up the next time down by more than five. <laughs> Chris Capuano is the starter for the Yankees. He's since been designated, as we mentioned. Felix Dubrant, the Blue Jays starter from last night's game, he too has been designated for assignment. His spot in the rotation has not been assigned yet. That will come up on Sunday. That's going to be really interesting, I think, for the Blue Jays. Maybe. Maybe they might have a new player. By Sunday. Well, man, that's what everybody kind of speculates on it. Alex Anthopoulos is going to go out there and bring in some pitching help for the Blue Jays. But you can't assume that. And certainly even Alex doesn't really know if he's going to be able to pull off a trade. This is a fly ball to right. Carrera. In right tonight as Bautista's the DH. He makes the catch. He is through six innings and he's shutting out the Phillies on just three hits.
presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Troy Tulowitzki in his first game with the Blue Jays has hit a home run and a double. He's driven in two and scored two. The sun went down on his Rockies career after 10 illustrious seasons. Now he begins a new career here in Toronto. Ezequiel Carrera is the right fielder tonight. Jose Bautista's in the DH spot. Bautista dealt with a cramp in last night's game, and they want to make sure that that is quieted down. Jose has singled, drove in a run, and scored a run tonight. That's a foul ball just outside of first. He did the right thing, I thought, last night. You know, there's no sense when you're feeling something like that in your legs. You've been there. Why run down the base and aggravate it even more? Right. When you can feel it and pick it up real quickly, you don't have to push it. Justin DeFreitas struck out Danny Valencia to end the fifth. Took over for Jerome Williams' started. Breaking ball catches the outside corner. Bautista now with 67 RBIs. He is third in the American League as Donaldson and Kendris Morales are tied with 68. The Royals, they got smoked this afternoon. They lost 12 to 1 in Cleveland. They will be here tomorrow night to start the four game series. Danny Duffy will open it up for KC against Marco Estrada. Detroit beat Tampa Bay this afternoon 2-1. to one. Good news there as Verlander finally picks up a win. What a pitching matchup that was this afternoon. Chris Archer and Justin Verlander, a 2-1 ball game. The Cubs beat the Rockies and Jose Reyes this afternoon, 3-2 to two in Chicago. Ground ball past the first baseman, rough into right field. Guerrero with a leadoff single. He is two for two with a sacrifice bunt. Guys, you mentioned that pitching gem in Tampa today. Further south in Florida tomorrow, another matinee. The Marlins will throw Dan Heron against Max Scherzer and the Nationals. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Sportsnet. The Nationals and Miami are in the bottom of the fifth. It's Washington 5-2. Doug Fister is the starter. How about the controversy they have created in Washington with the acquisition of Jonathan Papelbon? Juice Storen was having an all-star season as the closer for the Nationals, and now Papelbon is going to be put into that position. This is the second time it's happened to Drew Storen where he was bumped from the closer's role by a veteran closer. Soriana was the first one, and now it's Papelbon. Successful closing store, and, and then he went to a setup, and then it took him a while to get his footing again, and he was having a great year. That ball is out of play. Uh, Joe West says nobody touched it as it was airmailed by the pitcher, and now Carrera will end up at third base. The Freitas threw it past the first baseman rough. It never really was out of play. It bounced up against the wall. Fans were reaching for it, but nobody ever made contact, so it was a live ball. And Carrera goes to third on the two-base error. Second error of the night for the Phillies. 71st error on the season for the Phillies. You can see that ball is behind rough first baseman and down the right field line so Carrera can pick up second and third base they came into this game the Phillies second last in the National League in fielding percentage Pete McCannon have to talk to Joe West and McCannon was questioning I'm sure where whether or not there was contact down the Right side. Fans were reaching for that baseball, but nobody ever really made contact with it. 
So Kevin Pillar with another golden opportunity to cash in with a runner at third and nobody out. Four nothing Blue Jays. This is going to make it five nothing. Pilar with a sack fly to deep right field. Carrera jogging in with the fifth Blue Jays run of the night. Another sacrifice fly for the Blue Jays. They have had a sacrifice punt. Now a sacrifice fly. Also had a home run, some doubles, singles. The, the offense cashing in on every opportunity. After a mistake by the Phillies. Blue Jays have done a terrific job all season long hitting with runners in scoring position. And they put that practice into play in spring training and they've never deviated from the focus and concentration. Kevin Pillar, RBI number 38 with the sack fly. 5 nothing Blue Jays. Second baseman Ryan Goins one for two with a single and a run scored. Good balance in this attack once again. Martin has an RBI double. Bautista an RBI single. Kulowitzki a two run a home run. Pilar with a sack fly. Up and down the order. You know, you're going to have your core guys, if you will, on your team, your everyday guys who get paid the big money to play day in and day out. But to have a successful offense, everybody has to contribute. And that's what we have seen from the Jays this year. Contributions from everyone when they get the chance to play. This is truly a well-balanced offense. There's no doubt about that. It's a little... Right handed right now, especially with the trade of the switch hitting Reyes, who is much better from the left side. Goins and Carrera, the only left handed bats in the lineup. There are two switch hitters on the bench in Navarro and Smoke. Yeah, ideally, you'd like to have a little bit more balance to make it tough on the opponents manager late in the game if they wanted to go to a righty or a lefty to try to work over that bullpen. Goins will take ball four. He reaches for Tulowitzki who has homered here tonight in his first game with the Blue Jays. Third inning 0-2. Looked like Jerome Williams said I got to go with a high fastball. He just doesn't get it up high enough. That ball was hit hard in the second deck here at Rogers Center. And Troy Tula Woods, Witzke says, thank you very much. Welcome to Toronto. Tula Witzke has a double in the fifth. He scored two and driven in two. Line drive left field. This one's up and off the wall. Bowens is headed for a third. They're going to wave him home. Here's the relay to the plate. Not in time. This guy's pretty good. Not wasting any time with that runner on base. That time, another line drive to left field that carries off the base of the wall. Lefredis throws that patented breaking ball and Tulo's all over that one. It's almost like he was looking for it. Josh Donaldson takes one inside off the plate. Going, scoring all the way from first after taking a walk. 
Six nothing Blue Jays. How'd you like to be a pitching coach going over the Blue Jays lineup before the game? Okay, now the leadoff guy's to Lewitsky. Uh, we uh, uh, never mind. Let's go to the second guy. Uh, uh, Donald, no, well, how about no Bautista? No, it's not. It's a tough lineup. Just no rust areas. There's no place where you say, okay, if I can pitch around this guy and get to this guy, I think I have a chance. Here's your lineup right there. It just gets better and better. And that's what we were talking about. It's a long, deep lineup. Can't really pitch around anybody. How many intentional base on balls have the Blue Jays had this season? I mean, it's a very low number. Very rarely have we seen pitchers pitch around them because the guy behind them is just as good. They've had four intentional base on balls this season. I mean, who are you going to walk and who do you want to pitch to? Right. <laughs> When Larry Boer came out of the dugout here on Tuesday afternoon for the first time, he saw John Gibbons and he said, how many runs do you need to score? He was acknowledging the Tulewitzki acquisition. One and two, one out. Donaldson stays back and stays alive. Six runs on 12 hits. For Tulewitzki, it's his fourth three RBI game of the season. His season high is five. He drove in five at home against the Dodgers on the 3rd of June. That was for Colorado, of course. This one's hooking, hooking, and foul off the level of excellence down the left field line. Yeah, that's going to send the catcher out to talk to the pitcher about what they want to do with Josh Donaldson. You're talking about Troy Tillowiski. How about three extra base hits already in his first game as a Blue Jay? And everybody was ridiculing the Blue Jays, saying, you don't need any more offense. Well, Tillowiski will improve the pitching by his presence at shortstop. And he'll add a little more thump. One and two. Base hit. Donaldson slices it through the right side. They're going to stop Tulowitzki. And Donaldson reading the high throw will go into second. Oh, what a piece of base running. Donaldson running with his head up around first. Mind you, it's a 6 nothing game. But he never takes a play off. And that was a high throw. They airmailed the cutoff man, and he takes advantage. That's just playing baseball. You can see that the throw's high. He overthrows the cutoff man trying to get the runner. Why not move up? That's exactly what he does as he slides into second base safely. That's what you have to do as a baseball player. Play the game the right way. And now Bautista bats with runners at second and third. He had an RBI single his last time up. Tell you what, I would not want to be one of those infielders on the left side of the infield having to play in like that and Jose at the plate. Yeah. He drilled one through the left side of the infield his last time up. You could see Michael Frankel, the third baseman, how close he is against somebody like Bautista who was so quick on the inner half. Popped it straight back. He had a cut. You know, with Bautista at the plate, he's already picked up an RBI. He has 67, but he's got to be appreciative of the effort by Donaldson to get into scoring position. I mean, that was a routine single to right, but he never, ever gave up rounding first, and he gets himself into scoring position for Bautista. Ball and a strike. One out. Breaking ball. That's his best pitch right there. That sweeping slider. It's a plus pitch. He will use it to get the strikeouts. 
Chris Colabella was a late addition to the lineup as Edwin Encarnacion couldn't go after taking batting practice because of a finger issue. Lays off that breaking ball. Edwin took batting practice and then felt his middle finger. It appears to be around the knuckle area of that middle finger, and he couldn't go. He gave the manager the heads up, and Colabella was inserted into the lineup. Bouncing ball. Franco bobbles it. Bautista is going to be safe. As he will reach. Should be an error on the third baseman. He was hit to his glove side. He got the glove on him but couldn't make the play. Normally he would have been playing a little bit deeper at third base with a couple of runners on. You're down by a few runs. They have to play the infield in. You can see that ball went into his glove on the short hop. And then came out. Bautista credited with a single. The bases are loaded. Tulowitzki at third. Donaldson at second. Bautista at first for Chris Colabello. Colabello has one career grand slam. And a chance to make his manager look really smart. Well, Mellon is always aggressive, looking to get something to hit on his first or second pitch of an at bat. He had a choice, John Gibbons did, when Edwin scratched during batting practice. Justin Smoke at first base. Chris Colabella, and I asked him, why, why not Smoke? He said, because he's one for 21 in his career versus Jerome Williams. I'm going to play Colabella, who's already had a single tonight. Breaking ball. Strike, it's one and one. Colabello singled up the middle in the second. He was erased on the double play ball. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third and grounded out in the fifth. There are his numbers with the bases loaded, a 313 career average. Think about right back through the middle. He had a good at bat in Seattle when he was thinking back through the middle. He said, I didn't want to overcommit and roll over on a ball, hit a ball on the ground. I wanted to stay back through the middle, which he did, and end up being a game winner for the Blue Jays. Same approach here. Upstairs. Two balls and a strike. Blue Jays have scored two in the third. Two in the fifth and two more here in the sixth. Elvis Arajo, big left-hander, start to loosen up for the Phillies. Justin DeFreitas got the final out of the fifth, and he's been in trouble here in the sixth. Fly ball deep to center field. Revere is going to make the catch. Tagging at third is Tulowitzki. The throw goes to second. Colabello picks up the RBI. Second sacrifice fly of the inning. RBI number 39 for Colabello. Tulowitzki scores for the third time tonight. And that is because his approach at the plate was good. He didn't overcommit too quickly. Stayed right there. Stayed in the middle of the diamond. Drove in center field for the RBI. Colabello. Staying on it and picks up the RBI. Donaldson moves from second to third on the fly ball. Bautista remains at first. Russell Martin had an RBI double in the fifth. Martin is the eighth Blue Jay to bat in the sixth. Carrera got it started. Leadoff single. Went to third on the air by DeFreitas. And scored on the sacrifice fly by Pilar. Seven runs on 14 hits for the Blue Jays. It's a little bit more like what the Blue Jays are used to. 
score a lot of runs. Getting a good pitch game tonight by R.A. Dickey. R.A.'s finally getting some runs to work with. Uh, so Martin gets jammed and the Phillies will get the force at second. The inning is over, but the Blue Jays send eight men to the plate. They score three runs. R.A. Dickey getting some run support. Troy Tulowitzki as the leadoff man has had a big night in this first game for the Blue Jays. A home run and two doubles. He's driven in three and scored three. Welcome to Toronto. It's a long weekend in the city. The first 20,000 fans on Sunday will receive a Blue Jays welcome mat. Blue Jays and the Royals, a matinee, 1 o'clock. And the first 20,000 fans to get that welcome mat, Buck. It'll be a great weekend for Blue Jay fans. They can come out on Sunday and pick up the welcome mat. Monday, you'll get the Russell Martin bobblehead doll. So make sure you make your plans to come on out to Rogers Center and find out. Just exactly what the Blue Jays are all up to. How about Troy Tulowitzki's debut here with the Blue Jays? It's been a dramatic one for sure. R.A. Dickey has had a good night. Dickey has allowed no runs on three hits. Jeff Francoeur has a double off of Dickey that came in the second. These are the kind of guys I think. Uh, that Ari Dickey should have success against. Guys with a very aggressive swing, if you can float one in there. Grant Coor lifts it into center. That's going to drop. Grant Coor with his second hit. A leadoff single in the seventh. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update. Baltimore, the Blue Jays, Tampa Bay all bunched up chasing the front running Yankees. The Yankees have a seven game lead over Baltimore, seven and a half over Tampa. Now that's increased to eight where Tampa's lost today. Toronto, the start of play tonight, eight games back in fourth place. And then the Boston Red Sox bring up the rear. 14 games out at the start of play. That's uh, Nick Markakis going home, isn't it? Tim? Yes, it is. Isn't Markakis that serious? is returned. He's one for two tonight. He's hitting 291 on the season for the Atlanta Braves. Ground ball to Lewitsky. It's short. Goes to second for one. Go one's back to first in time. A nifty double play started by Tulowitzki. Ryan Goins is lightning quick around the bag at second, and they made easy work of that hot shot off the bat of Dominic Brown. Who can run down that line? Here's a nice feed from Tulowitzki and the strong arm from Goins as he used that bag as a protector. The Phillies 
are going to challenge this call. It's seven nothing Blue Jays. Dominic Brown was called out at first. He is still on the bag at first base as Dickey will have to bide his time now. Joe West is the crew chief. He made the call at first, so the next senior member of this umpiring crew is Kerwin Danley. He's at second. He'll come over and join Joe West on the headset. One more time. When does he hit that bag? Joe West, the umpire, had a good look at it, and he called Brown out. Now they're looking at the review. The Blue Jays won a challenge earlier in the game on a force out at second when the shortstop Freddie Galvis dropped the ball before he got to the bag at second base and Evans challenged it and won the challenge. That looks like that one might be overturned. And it is. So Joe West signals Dominic Brown safe. So the ruling on the field is overturned. Second time it's been overturned tonight. Good challenge by Pete McCann. He's the interim manager. He took over for Ryan Sandberg. So Fran Coor is out. 6-4 on the fielder's choice. Dominic Brown is at first now. Carlos Ruiz has grounded out to second and grounded out short. Ball gets away from Martin and bounces out in front of home as Brown will move up to second. Ari Dickey has not received an awful lot of run support, but tonight's a much different story for the knuckleballer. Yeah, you can see the problems that he had. June 29th, they got him one run. Detroit won nothing in Chicago. That was an up against Jeff Smarja. Ruiz lifts the high fly into shallow right. Carrera calls off the second baseman Goins. Two down now. Make your renovation a cut above during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center at Home Hardware Building Center. Beautiful shot of downtown Toronto. See a tower high above Roger Center coming across Center Island on a beautiful summer evening. The trade deadline is Friday and the Mets are making some big news. The Mets have acquired Carlos Gomez from the Brewers in exchange for Zach Wheeler and Wilmer Flores. So they get the bat they were looking for and they get a terrific defender whether they decide to play him in center or Right, but Gomez is an impact offensive player with his speed. And he goes back to the Mets. That's where he started. That's where he started. He was traded for Johan Santana, wasn't he? Yep. One of those young players that went to Minnesota. He found himself in Milwaukee. The Mets were very hesitant to give up Zach Wheeler. That's off the end of the glove. Martin hustles quickly, throws the first. The ball gets away from Colabello. Here comes Brown, and he's going to score. So... It'll be a strikeout, a wild pitch, and then probably an air on Martin as the ball got away at first. That allows Dominic Brown to come in to score all the way from second. So Ruff strikes out. He reaches on the wild pitch. Right off the glove of Russell, and he's got a shot right here. Colabella just cannot come up with the ball as he moves around the bag. Try and pick that play. Would have been a tough play. It's a wild pitch charge to Dickey. Second wild pitch of the inning. Russell is charged with the air. His third air of the season. That allows Dominic Brown to come in and score the first Philly run. Andres Blanco, the second baseman. Justin Smoke did not 
draw the start in tonight's game after Encarnacion was scratched because Smoke didn't have good numbers against the starter. Jerome Williams held Smoke to a one for 21. So John Gibbons obviously felt like the better option was Chris Colabello to get his bat in the lineup, and Colabello has responded with a hit and a sack fly. Bo Schultz starts to loosen up for the Blue Jays. Boy, the Blue Jays' bullpen was terrific last night. Five perfect innings. So fly ball into shallow center. Pilar cuts in front of Valencia. The inning is over. The Blue Jays give up a run. It's an unearned run. It comes in the seventh. Ari right, Dickey with another good outing. Blue Jays lead it seven to one. regular season game live or on demand in true HD. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and much more. MLB.TV Premium includes a free At-Bat 15 subscription. You can watch baseball at home, at the office, or on the go. For more information, BlueJays.com. Thank you very much, Arash. Another good crowd here on hand tonight at Rogers 7. 27,060 in attendance. Last night's game drew 30,516. Royals will be here tomorrow night to start a four-game series. Of course, the Royals, the American League defending champs. Kansas City lost this afternoon. That snapped their four-game win streak. They are 61-39. and 39. Going into play today, they had a nine-game lead over the second-place Minnesota Twins. Get a lefty tomorrow night. Danny Duffy will go up against Marco Estrada. And then Johnny Cueto will make his Royals debut. And the Blue Jays more than likely will see Ben Zobras, who was also acquired by the Kansas City Royals. For the Blue Jays, it'll be Estrada, Hutchison, Burley, and then to be determined on Sunday. That was the spot in the rotation previously occupied by Felix Dubron. How about Johnny Cueto and Edinson Volquez reunited? They were with the Cincinnati Reds as youngsters. Valencia strikes out. Balls in the dirt. One down. The 2015 Honda Civic is Canada's best-selling car for 17 years in a row and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Evening has fallen upon Toronto as the Blue Jays are wrapping up this short two-game series with the Philadelphia Phillies. Ezequiel Carrera started the rally in the sixth. He had leadoff single. Came in to score. 
He scored on the sack fly off the bat of Kevin Pillar. I think that inning, the key at bat was the Ryan Goins at bat. Two hopper to first baseman Darren Ruff. He steps on the bag. Two down. Kevin Pillar had had a sacrifice fly for the first out, and then Goins walked. Number nine batter really set the stages for Tulowitzki and Donaldson. Here is Pilar. He's over two. Officially tonight. This will be his fourth plate appearance. Right inside on Pilar, and that one may have got him on the leg or the foot. I think you're right. That got some piece of Kevin, I think. He's trying to walk that one off. The Blue Jays lost two of three to the Kansas City Royals in Kansas City right before the All Star break. And they would like to get a measure of revenge in this upcoming four game series. And it's a good test for the Blue Jays. Got the defending champs in the American League Royals here in your own ballpark. They're playing well, the Royals. Blue Jays have some new players, so should be a good series. The Royals sent Jeremy Guthrie to the mound this afternoon, and he got hit hard. The Indians beat Kansas City 12 to 1 in Cleveland this afternoon. Center field. Kevin Pillar has his first hit of the night. He's had a couple successful at bats. He had a sacrifice fly his last time up to drive in his 38th run, and then that high pitch. This time he gets on top of it. We have seen him in the past swing at that ball and pop it up. This time he keeps the hands above the baseball and drives it back through the middle. Hit number 15 of the night for the Blue Jays. Pillar's average now at 271. Ryan Goins has singled and walked. He scored twice. Drives this ball to the alley in left center. And that's going to go all the way to the wall. Pilar is headed around third. He's going to be waved to him. Ryan Goins with an RBI double with two outs. Goins with the RBI, his 26th of the season. Drive of the game is brought to you by the 2015 Honda Civic, Canada's best selling car. 17 years in a row, and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. How about his second at bat as a Blue Jay? The third pitch he sees in this at bat, and Troy Tulowitzki goes deep. A long home run, his 13th home run of the season. Blue Jays get their first runs of the night. Troy Tulowitzki gets the drive of the game. Tulowitzki, a pair of doubles to go along with that two run homer. Doesn't seem to be much of an adjustment period for Tulowitzki. <laughs> we were talking about that in the opening. You're in a new league facing all of these new pitchers. Now, Tulowitzki came from the National League, so he's faced a lot of these Philly pitchers in the past. But yeah, you're right. You know, new place, new league, got some pitchers you have to get a scouting report on. He hasn't uh, looked uncomfortable. Tulowitzki's had one four hit game this season that came in Philadelphia against the Phillies on the 29th of May. 
hit two home runs against Cole Hamels in that game. Bouncing ball. Galvis has it at short. In time, the inning is over. But the Blue Jays add a run. In the bottom of the seventh, Brian Goins with the RBI double. 8 1 Blue Jays. And the basic TV bundle for $62.97 a month. That's good for the first three months. Find out how by calling 1 888 Rogers 1. Thank you, Arash, and it has been quite a welcome party for Troy Tula Whiskey in his first game as a Blue Jay here at Rogers Center. He struck out in his first at bat. He got a rousing welcome in his first at bat before he ever stepped in the batter's box as the leadoff hitter him. And then he ends up with three hits, two doubles, a two run home run. He scored three and driven in three. Ben Revere, the center fielder, drives it to right. First hit for Revere. It's a leadoff single here in the eighth. First in this hit in the series for Revere. Blue Jays have done a good job in this quick two game series to keep his speed off of the bases. A little two seamer. Two seam fastball after he fell behind, and Revere goes out and gets it. Freddie Galvez is over three. There's a base hit past Colabello into right. Revere had to wait to let that ball go by. He can only move to second on the base hit. Back to back hits here in the eighth. Phillies have been a, an aggressive swinging bunch since the All Star break. As you see, smoke on the bench there. They come in swinging. This time, right by the base runner for the second hit of the inning and that's going to bring Pete Walker out to the mound and buy some time for Bo Schultz to get loose. And Dickey's thrown just 91 pitches. He's pitching with nobody out here in the eighth. Schultz was up earlier and Walker just checking on Dickey. Give him a little bit of a breather. 
buy some time for Schultz to get loose. The run came in to score after the call on the field was overturned in the seventh. Joe West had called Dominic Brown out at first on what looked to be a double play. The Phillies asked for the review and the call was overturned and that led to the only Philly run of the night. This is Michael Franco. The third baseman. One and one. Dickey with just one walk tonight. Four strikeouts. Ground ball. Donaldson wide at third. Goes to second for one. What a turn by Goins. They get another double play, and Goins has looked very comfortable at second. Donaldson going to his left made a strong feed over the bag. Yeah, he picked it and got rid of it very quickly. Watch, into the glove, out, and over to Goins, who comes across the bag that time. That cuts down the distance between the throw from Donaldson and where he catches it. Second baseman has to be able to turn the ball at second base a couple of different ways. Goins, who came up as a shortstop and has a good arm, finishes it off. Ryan Howard 0 for 3. Ball almost got away from Martin upstairs. Russell Martin acknowledging that last pitch from Dickey that it was a good knuckleball. Still has good movement. Remember in the middle of this ball game, Martin got dinged up. Catching that knuckleball got hit on the thumb. In fact, got hit on the thumb during the first inning warm-ups. Foul. Just outside the first base foul line. But it hasn't affected him, I think, at all the rest of the night. Hector Neris is ready, standing by in the Phillies bullpen. Justin DeFreitas has gone two and a third for Philadelphia. Chuchu pitch to Howard. Way outside. Harry Dickey has really pitched well of late. If Francoeur has two of the six Philly hits tonight. Fly ball. This is playable. Valencia a long run into foul ground and missed it. Boy, he had a long way to go. He got to it. But... When you're running that long, the ball has a tendency to bounce on you, and he put a glove on it but couldn't make the catch. Danny's going to be charged with his first error of the season. You're right. you got to run on your toes if that ball starts to bounce. He's got a long ways there. But he just misses it. Keeps the bat alive for Ryan Howard. 27 start in the outfit, and you can see Danny's disappointed. He got to it, just couldn't make the play. So Howard will have another pitch. He drives this one for a base hit to right. Revere comes in to score. And Howard picks up the RBI, number 54 for the DH. Isn't that the way it always happens? You get a chance to retire a hitter. He gets one more opportunity because of the air. And he delivers the single. That's why it's the toughest league right here There's good players here and when you have a chance to make out you gotta take advantage of it Jeff Francoeur a two for three night against Dickey his first two hits against R.A. in his career he is just two for five against Dickey he drives this one off the end of the bat to center field this should end the inning and it does Blue Jays get another, excuse me, the Phillies get another run. It's 8-2 Blue Jays. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's time 
For Blue Jays Central Update, here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zorn. afternoon he was still shocked by the trade after his first batting practice he said he was anxious and nervous for his debut well a two-run bomb to open the evening sure helps quell all those nerves and the anxiousness buck welcome to toronto indeed for his blue jays newest acquisition for he certainly got up to a great start tonight at that Two run home run and his second at bat in the third inning. Then he added a double in the fifth, another double in the sixth. He's driven in three, scored three. Ben Homer in his first game with the Blue Jays. This is Hector Neris making his eighth appearance of the season. Just had his contract selected from Lehigh Valley as Triple A July the 7th. Neris fastball proving slider. He's got a split. Blue Jays, I'm sure, will look at the scouting report and look for that. Look like a high splitter right there. Justin DeFreitas went two and a third. He was charged with four earned runs on six hits. He walked one and struck out two. R.A. Dickey with another terrific outing tonight. He has really thrown the ball well recently. He has given up two runs, but they're both unearned runs. Eight innings, seven hits, walked one and struck out four. See him talking to his catcher tonight, Russell Moore, and I'm talking to Russell before the ball came, and I was asking him about R.A., and he says he feels like he's been throwing the ball well all season long. Just hasn't had much to show for it. Because they have not been able to get him many runs to work with. But tonight, eight runs should be enough. Martin and Dickey certainly have to be satisfied with the outing tonight. Jose Bautista's had another good night with the bat. Picked up an RBI. He's got a couple of hits. Bautista serving as the DH tonight. Donaldson grounds it to short. Galvez has it, and Donaldson's retired. One down. F and Nora finally get to see their lethal virus in action. Will it be enough? Find out in a new episode of The Strain, Sunday at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on FX. One down for Jose Bautista. The Blue Jays have an 8-2 lead as they bat in the bottom of the eighth. 
trying to split the short two game series with Philadelphia. Kansas City Royals will be in town for four game series starting tomorrow night. Kansas City more than likely already here in Toronto. They played this afternoon in Cuba. Kansas City's been active at the trade deadline. They picked up Johnny Cueto from Cincinnati and Ben Zobris from Oakland. Kansas City is not thinking about just getting into the playoffs. Kansas City is thinking about winning the World Series. They got a nice little taste of it last season. They want to finish the deal this year. Yeah, and you know what? They've got a good young team. They've got a great bullpen, and they've added to their starting rotation by acquiring Johnny Cueto. Bautista with a good cut. It's two balls and two strikes. It's a tough team to play because you have to score early in the game. And if you don't get the lead by the sixth or seventh inning, their bullpen is a shutdown type of bullpen. Shut down, shut out, no hits. They are tough. Mm -hmm. The Kansas City Royals bullpen is as good as anybody's. And they will be here tomorrow night. Bautista gets under it and skied it to left. Francoeur, the left fielder, makes the call and makes the catch. Two down. Lots of activity with the trade deadline coming up. It is Friday at 4 p.m. and we'll have a trade deadline special. All the baseball experts here at Sportsnet will be involved. It all starts at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on Sportsnet. Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn will be involved. Hazel May as well. Mike Wilner will be involved. Pat and I will make a comment or two. And Arash Madani will be involved as well. So make sure you check it out. That'll be before our Friday night game. It all starts at 4 p.m. Eastern time. That'll take you right up to the trade deadline one. And there's a lot of it at the end, isn't there? Every year it seems like there is a flurry of activity that last down. Carlos Gomez goes to the Mets tonight. And the Mets have been active. They picked up Tyler Clippert as well. Earlier in a deal with the Oakland A's. Everybody's needs are a little bit different. Mets had earlier acquired Juan Uribe and Kelly Johnson from the Atlanta Braves, and they continue to tinker with their roster. How about the Dodgers today getting into the act? They picked up Matt Latos and Mike Morris from the Marlins. And now, evidently, Dave Dombrowski has hung up the for sale sign in the Tigers' office, and they're going to think about moving some of their players. So that's David Price. Maybe Joaquin Soria. Hmm. Talabello fights it off and stays alive. You know who's been quiet? The Cincinnati Reds. With all their players that are set to become free agents. Other than Johnny Cueto. They traded Johnny Cueto for Brandon Finnegan, John Lamb, and Cody Reed. That was on the 26th of July. Colabella is called out on strikes. A good inning for Hector Neris. We will go to the ninth. The Blue Jays with an 8-2 lead. Bo Schultz coming out to wrap it all up for R.A. Dickey.
Blue Jays Baseball Fantasy Camp, November 15th to 20th in Dunedin. Robbie Alomar, George Bell, Jesse Barfield, many more are going to be there. Package includes airfare, hotel, meals, uniform, and four days of baseball. Spots are limited. Check out BlueJays.com slash Fantasy Camp for more information. Should be a great time this upcoming November as Bo Schultz come on, comes on to work the ninth inning. It'll be his 19th appearance of the season. Schultz has really pitched well since joining the Blue Jays. First time that we have seen him in this series. He last pitched that final game in Seattle. Bo has shown a very good fastball. Justin Smoke has taken over at first base for Chris Colabello here in the ninth inning. Bo is fastball has been very impressive. It's got a lot of late movement and it's in the upper 90s. Been cutting the ball low 90s which has been really impressive. Dominic Brown takes that first pitch up in the way. Brown reached on a fielder's choice and came in to score the first Philly run. That was in the center. Line to Donaldson. With one out in the ninth, it's now time for a preview of what's coming up on Sportsnet Central. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osman. Thank you very much, Ivanka. And it's going to be a very busy night once again as there's a lot going on in the baseball world. That's all coming up next on Sportsnet Central. This is Carlos Ruiz. He's 0 for 3. Ground ball. Donaldson gets a nice hop. Takes his time. Shooting. So R.A. Dickey is in line for his fifth win of the season. Dickey, another strong performance. Eight innings. Scatters seven hits over those eight innings. Allowed no earned runs. Two runs overall. A walk in four strikeouts. He drops his ERA to 427. Been pitching much better. No earned runs. Uh, very strong. His knuckleball is very good today. Kept it in the zone. They didn't get a runner to third base until the seventh inning. That, that's how dominant he was against this Phillies team. And it took a couple of wild pitches and an air for the Phillies to capitalize and score their first run. Darren Ruff, the first baseman, has struck out twice tonight. He's also grounded on. Seven on the corner. Tough to deal with. Yeah, with some movements. To finish off this ball game right here with a good pitch. That'll do it. Bo Schultz makes quick work of the Phillies in the ninth. Caps off a terrific start from R.A. Dickey. The Blue Jays split the short two game series, winning eight to two. And what a debut! For Troy Tulowitzki, the new shortstop for the Blue Jays. It didn't take him long to get uh, the, the crowd 